Hello students, it is nice to uh, once again meet you through this video. Uh, you would have already listened to the first lecture of this chapter called Elasticity. So we are going to continue uh, what we have been seeing. So we saw about uh, the modulus of elasticity. There were three modulus. One is the Young's modulus of elasticity. Next one is the bulk modulus of elasticity. And the third one is the rigidity modulus of elasticity. There were three things we saw that and the respective formulas. Today we are going to see about how to determine Young's modulus through an experiment. So I'll just take you through this apparatus itself. I'm not just going to uh, do much beyond this. Um, two wires, same material. Remember, same material. So maybe if it is a kind of a material of uh, maybe steel wire is there, again the steel wire is here. And um, these two wires are being now kept in a way. So this wire is a kind of a scale where you will have a scale here. So this is a kind of a standard wire, A wire and B wire is will go through a load. It will go through the stress. The B wire is the one which is an experimental wire. So this is a dead weight is there and you are able to see this there is a graduation is there. Now keep adding weight on this one. Add 1 kg first of all, just 1 kg. And you will find this is going to show one scale here. Note on that scale. And then draw a plot on this one. Plot it. So for load of 1 kg, how much was this one particular thing? Okay, maybe it was around 5 centimeters. And then add another weight, 2 kg. So when you go to 2 kg here, Definitely this is going to elongate. This is going to elongate. So it just goes on to the show the another reading here. And stress the reading. Put the reading here. And go on to add another weight. 3 kg. And see how much it is going to be on the elongation here. Every time it is going to elongate. Maybe earlier it was here as maybe 6 cm. And now it is going for a 7 cm, 8 cm, 9 cm. It goes on. So go to 4 kilometers, go 4 kilograms, and then go and see. You will see this as a straight line. You will see this as a straight line because yesterday we saw that one. Within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. So you will find the elongation will be, this is the elongation, this is current the strain and this is the stress. That is the load which is here. The load which is there in kilograms. So based on this one, you can take the slope. Slope is going to be elongation that is delta L upon load that is M so you can find the calculate this one okay so what you do is draw this to graph write this formula and you will have a ratio of two things one is y axis this is elongation small L this is small L is there and what is this one with respect to the load M is there the mass is constantly changing here so you will find here L and M, M by L, you will find a ratio. G is constant, 9.8. L is the initial length. The initial length is constant. So you got an maybe 1.5 meters or maybe 1 meter. This is the length is constant. Radius also the constant value. So putting all of them, you can find out the Young's modulus of a material here. Because you will know the change in mass and the length, how this one has changed. Alright. So please write down a small line about how when we increase the load of this one the elongation also keeps increasing and it is plotted in a graph again I'm repeating you increase the load of this wire the elongation also changes that is L changes and hence a graph is plotted draw this graph and then based on this value of the slope so the slope is going to be equal to M upon L so you can say slope is going to be equal to L upon M. So this ratio you will get here by the graph. And based on this, you can put this value as mg into L upon pi r square. So mg is count capital L, where it's going to be small l. So this M and L, you can substitute this one because L by M is there and reciprocate it, then you get this value. These are all, all constants. Then you will get the Young's modulus you'll get. You can determine the Young's modulus in fact. Alright, we'll go to the next part of it. 
So the next one is Poisson's ratio. What is Poisson's ratio is um, if you have a thick big one pipe or one where rubber piece is there and you give a force. What happens here? It elongates. Once it elongates, never imagine, never think that the thickness is going to be the same. Definitely thickness is not going to be the same. You will find this body will reduce in its thickness. Have you seen that one? When you keep pulling it, definitely this diameter is going to be reduced to a smaller diameter. So you will find it is going to have a delta D, the change in the diameter. What is this one? The original diameter is D and this is the length and what is the next one because of the additional length is there so what is Poisson's ratio is the there are two strain will happen there are two strains one is called lateral strain what is the lateral strain this is going to be the change in diameter to the original diameter that will be definitely a negative sign because it is getting reduced and the next one is longitudinal strain which is going to be equal to change in length upon origin length. So the Poisson's ratio is equal to lateral strain lateral strain upon longitudinal strain which is equal to minus delta D by D upon delta L by L that's called Poisson's ratio it's called sigma alright so you can determine this one simple as that it is just a value it is just a number no unit is there so Poisson ratio you will get okay now look at this one so that's the way it is minus delta D upon into L upon this one so the sigma so you can change it into a radius also because if you want to take a radius delta so delta D you can put delta R instead of capital D you can put the radius and theoretically delta the sigma lies between minus 1 to 0 0.5 so that's the theoretical value in solid materials which is less than 0 0.5 also it is there and it tie lies between 0 0.25 e2 and 0 0.35 okay so solid materials it is always like this and then these are all things it is going to be uh, varied where the radius will be there minus 1 to 0 0.5 is the ratio Okay, we have gone done this one. Please draw this diagram also. The diagram is important here. Either draw this diagram or the diagram which I have drawn here. Okay, let us go to the next very very important uh, derivation. That is work done in stretching a wire. So in other words, it is called as elastic potential. energy right so hope you have written this one elastic potential energy so we are going to see whenever you are elongating something anything you elongate right so this is there you elongate it elongates for uh, distance delta L and this is the value of length here right as it elongates here, you will find there is an energy which has been stored in this one because it has got into a change in shape. And because of that change, you already put a lot of force on that. You put a lot of force on that and it is stored as an energy there. We can call it as an elastic potential energy. Very crucial, very, very important. Alright. So, consider, consider a body of Young's modulus Young's modulus y length l given a load so we are going to give a load that is uh, f f is the load is given here therefore y is going to be equal to delta l upon l stress upon strain it is a stress upon strain it is f upon a upon delta l upon l you already know this one 
here what we'll do is delta L is going to be equal to X we can consider we'll consider this in X value so which is going to be equal to instead of this one I'll consider this X delta L is going to be equal to X here so look at this one F upon A into small L upon X so I can consider this as capital L here the entire length this is the original length of this one okay so the next one is what is the force here force is going to be equal to y into a into x upon l these two are called cross multiply these two goes up y a x length comes down now this is force okay and um, this is the way it is this is equation number one when you give a force like this let us consider the body goes for a very very short distance call dx okay let dx be a sh small extension extension due to the load therefore work done dw is going to be equal to f into dx right dw is equal to y a into x upon l into dx so this is dw integrate on both sides right integrate on both sides so once you integrate here integration of dw is going to be equal to integration of y a x upon l into dx now integration is going to be from 0 to small l what is small l this entire thing is going to go for an elongation here that is called small l now slow a small distance has been changed the entire elongation is going to be small l so derived into small l is there so take um, some common terms outside here this x dx 0 to l so this is w w is the work done so y a upon l x square right into x square divided by 2 it will be definitely x square divided by 2 that is why it is so it is going to be equal to y a upon 2 l into l square minus 0 because l square first of all it is there and then 0 is being put that is w so what is the work done is going to be equal to y a l square upon 2 l this is stored as a potential energy here this is stored as a potential energy here this is the the first result that you get here the first report result you get here is this much okay with this that derivation gets complete y a l square upon 2 l then you can take little more different different instances based on this so u is going to be equal to y a l square upon 2 l this is potential energy this is potential energy this is a usually general one now what i do is i'm just trying to give some kind of a shape to this whole thing all right y into a and then this is l upon l right and this a is also a into l you can put here right and what you got here is one more l small l here upon capital L what are the changes I made is listen here y half is the same 1 by 2 is same 1 by 2 is here y is the same here thing here L and L, two L's are there, L square. Got it? Small L and another L here, L square. This A is out, and we have put one of the L, the capital L here, and another capital L here. <coughs> These two can get cancelled out. There is a reason for that. I'll just let you know. Delt A L, <coughs> and this L is an additional L, and there is an additional L here. These two length can get cancelled out. Look at this very carefully here. What does it mean by that? Half 
into this going to be called as stress if you look at the stress formula y into l upon capital l this is going to be called as stress into what is this one l upon small l capital l this is change in length upon original length strain what is this one a into l area of cross section into length this is going to be called as volume so that is called potential energy that is called potential energy so you can also see it as potential energy per unit volume so u upon volume is going to be equal to half into stress into strain so that's also uh, quite an understandable one so so you can you have an kind of an idea about half into stress into strain is called the uh, value of potential energy all right we'll go to the next one so i it's already done so it's a little extended derivation which is needed and you need to definitely do it thoroughly and properly the theory portion is getting over now so one topic is that force produced in cooling is the optional one so i'm just leaving it application of elasticity please go and read it there are quite a lot of good examples there there rope of a crane how it is really done so that it will be very strong so that's also having a high elasticity and then explanation of elastic the elasticity on the base of atomic model so atoms and the molecules inside definitely have a lot of elastic property so we have that over here so it is having a very very clear nice structure and interatomic force constant it's also here so we're not just going to go through everything i'm just leaving it there so these two things you can just read it all right now quickly we'll go to the numerical part of it look at this one so start now numericals example 1 so we have done with the theory portion we are just quickly going to the numerical part of it now question number 1 a steel wire of length 4.7 meters that means there is a steel wire length is going to be equal to 4.7 meters and area of cross section area of cross section of steel is 3.0 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter square this is length and area of cross section stretched by the same amount as a copper wire so this is copper you have a length 3.5 meters this is one and area of cross section of copper is 4 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter square these two things are given here what is the ratio of the young's modulus this is the young's modulus of steel this is the young's modulus of copper we need to find out the ratio so it's pretty interesting here so go ahead what is young's modulus it's going to be equal to the area of cross section is already given the length is already given and what is it happening here is it is same amount stretches by same amount what does it mean by that so here delta l of steel and delta l of copper is same so given what is given here given delta l of steel is going to be equal to delta l of copper that is already something which is given here now what is the young's modulus of the steel so it's going to be equal to mg right um because it's having some kind of a force it is stretched okay so it's going to be equal to force into upon area upon delta l upon capital l so what is that f into capital l into delta l into a that is young's modulus of the steel now what are the two things is there this is length of the steel and then delta l of a steel here force and the area of cross section is same 
and copper is also equal to force into length of the copper wire upon delta L of copper into area of cross section. These are the two things. Now divide both of them and you will get an answer here. So Ys upon Y copper. So F into Ls divided by delta L S into A divided by F into L C U copper into delta L into C U into A. Fourth gets cancelled. This gets cancelled. So what is the next part of it? How does it go? So you get here. So I'll just go a little more. I'll just tell Y steel upon Y copper is going to be equal to what are the things is left out now? The <coughs> so if you see this one LS upon L length and you get here the reciprocal of this one you will get here rest everything is fine now you need to put this value here and then get the final answer what is the length of the steel length of the steel is 4.7 this is 4.7 and length of the copper is 3.5 it is 3.5 into the change in length the change in length in centimeters of these two things I think that's two are same those two are already there now look at this one area of cross section only it is a change is there right so what is that it is changing now in the area of cross section this one and this one is same area of cross section of steel area of cross section of copper is different it cannot be you cannot just cut this one area of cross section is still the same what is cancelled is what has got cancelled is this has got cancelled because these two are same so here is actually the area of cross section area of cross section of this one because both of them are in the denominator so what is the area of cross section of copper the area of cross section of copper is 4 into 10 to the power of minus 5 4 into 10 to the power of minus 5 and what is the area of cross section of steel 3 into 10 to the power of minus 5 3 into 10 to the power of minus 5 that is Young's modulus you can find the ratio pretty simple this gets cancelled out 1.4 by 3 so you get the 4 by 3 value and then this one when you do these two things when you do this in the calculator you will get 1.79 close to 1.8 1.79 you will get alright I did a little mess up please make sure you don't do this mess up what the mess up I did is I thought these are the two things is going to be the variable I thought the area of cross section is the same but no both of them both the wires are extending the same extension that's what it is both the wires are having the same extension here alright so one wire is steel and another wire is copper and both the wires are having the same kind of an load this also having the same force this also having the same force and both of them are also extending the same length so this is also delta L and delta L of this one is same then what is the going to be the value of Young's modulus so then we found that the x minus modulus is going to be equal to the ratio is going to be what is the ratio here it is 1.79 so x mod of steel and x mod of copper is going to be this much let us go for the next question now so it goes on to say that a steel wire of unloaded length okay not in the load unloaded length is 1.5 and a brass wire brass wire it is unloaded length is 1 meter so both of them are there 
are loaded as shown in the figure. So look at this one. Steel wire is 1.5. You get 4 kg here. And brass wire is other than 1 meter here. And it is 6 kg is now loaded in this one. Now, be very careful how do you see this one. Look at the steel wire. Steel wire is carrying how much load? The steel wire is carrying a 4 kg load plus 6 kg load. Totally how much the steel wire is carrying? 10 kg. How much weight the brass wire is carrying? Just 6 kg. So, naturally both those wires are not equally getting that load. Steel is having more load, brass is having less load. So, the diameter of each wire is 0.25 cm. Compute the elongation of the two wires. We need to find out how much this one elongates and how much other one elongates. And the modulus of elasticity is given here. That is Young's modulus of steel, Young's modulus of brass is given there, G is given there. Basic parameters are all given here. So, we need to quickly go ahead and try to find out the values. How does this go? Again, you have two parts. You need to divide into two parts and then see whatever it is. The length of steel is 1.5 meters brass what is brass the length is 1 meter now the force on steel is going to be equal to 4 plus 6 G and the force on the brass it is just 6 kg it is 6 kg into G alright M into G if you put that one that's fine and the next one is radius the radius is given here as uh, 0 0.25 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 2 because it's written there diameter of each wire is 0.25 centimeter 0.25 means 0.25 divided by 2 centimeter 10 to the power of minus 2 you have to convert into meters so again here 0 0.25 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 2 right and already both of them having Young's modulus of steel 2 into 10 to the power of 11 pascals Young's modulus of brass 0 0.91 10 to the power of 11 pascals G is here same thing 9.8 9.8 you need to find out separately this both of them. You need to just find out separately both this one. What you need to find out is delta L. Delta L of steel, question mark. Delta L of brass, question mark. So can you go ahead and see this one? I can just do one of them. Then you can do the other one. Young's modulus is going to be equal to force into capital L upon area into small l. That's what we know always. What is small l? You can say delta l also you can say. Alright. Now you are supposed to find out delta l. So it's going to be equal to forces m into g into capital L pi r square. This is pi r square into y s. Now go on to substitute this whole thing. This is 10 into 9.8 into the length is 1.5 divided by pi into radius. It is 0 0.25 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 2 the whole square into 2 into 10 to the power of 11 pascals. This is delta L of steel. I have done the same thing, mass 10 kg, g is 9.8, length is 1.5, pi is the same, r square is, already we saw this r square here, the same r square is here, Young's modulus is given there, simple as that, you get the answer here, same way you do go ahead of this one also, same way you go ahead of this one also, the way Young's modulus r, maybe delta L of brass is going to be equal to, same mg L upon, pi r square into yb 
everything is same. What is the mass? Just 6 kg into 9.8 and what is the length? This is just 1 meter and pi into 0 0.25 into 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 2 the whole square and what is the Young's modulus? It is 0 0.91 into 10 to the power of 11. So put everything delta L brass. Then you get the answer here. Alright, you will get an answer. You can just put this one. Alright, we will go to the next question now. Okay, this one shows four identical hollow cylinder columns of steel supported support a big structure of mass 50,000 kg. Mass is going to be equal to 50,000 kilogram. It is supporting. What is that? So it is kind of an four columns are there. So you get four columns of some kind of a pillars and it is maybe it is supporting a huge one. Right? So imagine it is having a huge structure like this and something very huge. But what is that? There are four columns there. Something like this. Hope you are able to understand this one. When say, the pressure is very high on all of them, so it is compressing. This is compressing these columns. So four identical hollow cylindrical columns of steel support a big structure of mass 50,000 kg. So 50,000 kg is the mass which is just pushing this one. So what is the load on each of them? Each of them is, so load on each column is going to be equal to 50,000 divided by 4. That is the force. So 1.25, so it will be 1.25 kg. Force is going to be equal to this much into G also, 9.8. Alright. Now, the inner and outer radii of the column are, this one, R1 is going to be equal to 40 centimeter. R2 is going to be equal to 30 centimeter. Inner and outer radius. So, what is the area of cross-section? It is going to be equal to pi into 40 square minus 30 square. So, that is the area of cross-section. Right? So, what is that? How will you find out this one? Pi into 40 plus 30 is going to be equal to 70 and into 10. How did you do this one? 40 A square minus B square. A plus B, A minus B. Right? And this is centimeters square. Centimeters. So, it will be equal, equal to 10 to the power of minus 4. It will be that value. So, you can get this value here. The area of cross section is done there. And uh, respectively, assume the load distribution is uniform. Call it the compressional strain. What is compressional strain? It is going to be equal to delta L upon L. The strain. It is question mark. Right? Young's modulus is already given there. Y is given here as 2 into 10 to the power of 11 pascals. Okay? So everything is given here. Now, how do you go about the value here. Everything is given here. Y is going to be equal to force into length upon area of cross section into the change in length. This is what the basic thing is. This is actually the question mark. What is the question mark is? Delta L by L is going to be equal to so it is cross multiplied F A Y. This is gone down. That is gone down. So what is F is going to be equal to 12500 into 9.8 what is area? It is pi into 70 into 50 into 10 to the power of minus 4 that is area right into what is Y? 2 into 10 to the power of 11 put all the values you will get delta L by L you will get. Okay. This much is there. What is the unit of this one? No units. 
it is as just simple as the number you will get right so 2.78 into 10 to the power of minus 6 is going to be the answer right it's just a value it is, doesn't have any units of this one please try to do yourself whether this calculation is coming right let us go to the next question now right a rigid bar I'm doing question number 8 a rigid bar of mass 15 kg is supported symmetrically by three wires of two meter long can you draw a diagram for this 15 kg is this one so this is the uh, rigid support three wires are flowing down and you're getting a 15 kg bar here so tension tension here so the tension here and this is a 15 kg bar which is going to be m into g right now if this is the weight which is just actually pulling it down now look at the question now those at each end are copper wires this is copper this is copper that's what according to the question and the middle one is a iron one this is iron one determine the ratio of their diameters if each is having the same tension tension is same now we need to find out the value of the diameter of this one determine the ratio of the diameters so if you look at this one diameter of copper divided by diameter of iron you need to find out that's a question mark right so it is quite a straight question doesn't have much of the complexity but here is three wires are there all right so the first thing is tension on the wire or you can say on each wire what is the tension on each wire so tension is going to be equal to 1 by 3 of the total weight so what is 1 by 3 because there are 3 wires are there 15 so tension is going to be equal to 1 third of 15 into 9.8 so it will get added here it is 49 newtons that is the tension so you got this one what is the next one it is there you have to find out the value of this one only rest everything is pretty uh, fine so let us go on to draw conclusions of these two things okay so one side is copper and next one is iron so what is the length so length is going to be the same 2 meters length is 2 meters what is tension 49 newtons here also tension 49 newtons because it's all going to have a same tension is there that's what is told here and the next one is diameter is copper is different diameter of iron is different okay the ratio we need to find out and what else the next one is there diameter is done and then tension is done what is Young's modulus of copper what is the Young's modulus of iron Young's modulus of iron is 2 into 10 to the power of 11 and what is a copper one it is iron it is not steel so it is 1.9 and this is 1.2 into 10 to the power of 11 pascals it is a pascal one right so what is the actual formula here force is going to be equal to m into g the in spot is equal to m into g there is a force into the full length upon area of cross section into delta L that's the way usually we see this one now it is other words m g L upon pi d square by 4 this is area of cross section area of cross section is pi r square in another pi r square diameter di diameter square into delta L all right so what are the things are quite similar what are things are changing we need to find out by this value here so it goes on like this 
So y is directly inversely proportional to d square. Okay. So the diameter of copper divided by the diameter of the value of iron is going to be equal to under root of the Young's modulus of iron divided by Young's modulus of copper because it is inversely proportional diameter of copper upon diameter of iron is going to be equal to this much so look at this value here it's quite simple just the last part is there Young's, mod, uh, Young's modulus is 1.9 into 10 to the power of 11 and this is 1.2 into 10 to the power of 11 that's all take the under root you get an answer that is the value of the ratio here okay when you see this whole answer you will get here as 1.258 you will get you can try also that is diameter of copper upon diameter of iron this is the ratio this is what it is asked all right children with this i close you can see the whole thing and then many other numericals will flow i'll just give a small homework you need to do that thank you